Hey guys, today we're gonna go over reasons why your skink might not be eating. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and blue tongue skink breeder. And you're watching Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive bred, and animal focused. For new animal keepers, it is definitely scary when your animal doesn't eat. I get it. I like to have my animals eat too because eating is a good sign of health and acclimation. However, when your animal doesn't eat, that doesn't necessarily mean it's time to panic. So today we're going to go over four reasons why your animal might not be eating and ways to mitigate it. The number one reason that I've observed these animals go off food is changing environments. So if you've just rehomed your animal, that means you've just purchased it. It's been in one environment with one set of people and animals and outside surroundings to look at, and it's been taken, put in a box, or even just put in a tub and transported to a different location, pulled out and put into an entirely different style environment with different people and different angles of light. That whole thing is a significant change for the animal, and they didn't know it was coming. Humans, when we like move houses or apartments, we know it's coming and it's still stressful, right? So, it's same thing applies with these guys. Stress suppresses appetite. It's what happens in animals. Now, it doesn't mean because they're stressed that, oh no, they're gonna stress and die. That is very rare in blue tongue skinks. They will come around to eating again, but they've just been through a significant change. And so, often people will panic way too soon. I see over and over again people asking questions, help, my skink's not eating. How long have you had it? Three days, four days, five days, a week. Guys, give them time. Unless it's a newborn, they can go a week. Easy. I feed my adults once a week. They can skip a week and be just fine with no ill effects. That's what's part of their biology. They're designed as opportunistic omnivore generalists to take food as it comes. That means when it's there, they can eat it plentifully, and when it's not, they can maintain for a certain amount of time. Now, as long as your animal's not starting to lose body mass, that there's not supposed to, you're not start, starting to see protruding hip bones and a defined spine in the tail especially, you're fine. An adult can go months without eating. My males will go, actually, when they go through brumation, they'll go into brumation and they'll not eat until after breeding season. So they'll go five months sometimes without taking a nibble. So if you have a sub-adult or an adult, you've got months and months, unless that they're starting to get and appear ill, then you might need to see a vet. But other than that, guys, it's probably too soon. If it's a younger animal, give it a week or two at least before worrying that they're not eating because stress does suppress an appetite and an entire environmental change is a big deal. And if you contribute to that stress even more by every few minutes checking on them and pulling them out of the enclosure and handling them and all of these things and then trying to feed them and trying to feed them and trying to feed them, all you're doing is actually prolonging the stress a little bit. Give them some time. These guys take a lot longer to adjust to things. A mammal may get 10 days of antibiotics where these guys get 30 days of antibiotics because everything in the reptile world is a little bit slower. So just be patient. Another reason that these guys might go off food or not eat is that the environment isn't set up correctly. There's either too few hides, so it's incredibly stressful in general, so it's more difficult to get acclimated, as I previously said, or it's just the temperatures aren't right. A cold skink is not a hungry skink because they know that they're not gonna be able to digest and they're more interested in conserving the resources that they already have until it warms up again. Kind of, that's their biological survival mode. So, if the enclosure's not at the right temperatures, that means the hot spot isn't at the appropriate basking temperature and the warm side isn't at a nice temperature and the cool side isn't warm enough to stay in that range to keep them in a me metabolic active state, then they actually might not be interested in food ever until you change that. So it's important to ensure that your 
your basking spot, your hot side, and your cool side are all at the right temperatures. Also important to provide a hide that goes from the hot to the cold or back and forth. In these back here, I have that long hide and they can hide and be warm or they can hide and be cool all within that same long hide actually. It's kind of nice. And also the, I've got that um, foliage in here where that foliage actually provides a little bit of cover and security for them. So if you're finding that your animals is not eating, it could be an environmental system. It could be that they're too cold. So check and make sure your heat's right and make sure there's enough areas to hide and branches and maybe foliage that kind of gives them some uh, the illusion of concealment so that they can feel a little bit more secure and they will acclimate quicker. Not only that, but their biology will turn on and their hunger and their appetite will kick in. So definitely check out the temps to make sure that those are accurate. One more thing about temperature. Make sure you're measuring that temperature accurately. So if you have that little round dial thing and you've got it way up at the top of your enclosure near the light and it's reading 90, guess what? It's 90 right there. It may not be 90 down where the skink is. So you might think you've got good temps, but you don't. So I recommend getting a temp gun to measure surface temperatures that are actually in contact with the animal. Those other little dials, I actually think they're kind of garbage, but you're welcome to use them to get an idea of ambient temperature. But wherever the dial is, is where the temperature is. So if the dial is six inches above where the skink ever goes, keep in mind that you're not getting an accurate reading of where the actual skink is. And that is important. So I recommend getting a temp gun. You can get them at the hardware store. There's a link down in the description to my kit. I don't get any money from it. It's just a list for you guys because lots of people ask, what's this? What's that? Go down there and check out those supplies. They're very useful. You don't have to buy from there, but it's just to give you an idea of what I use. So make sure that you are actually accurately measuring temperature with either a temp gun or a digital uh, thermometer and using the sensor where the skink is, not somewhere else, but where the skink is. Another potential reason for an animal to go off food or not be interested in food, one, I mean, they could be pregnant, that's true. It could be breeding season, so it could be a seasonal situation. But if it's an imported animal, it could actually be parasites. I mean, yes, technically captive born and bred northerns could have parasites, especially depending on the quarantine procedures and where you acquired your animal from. However, most likely the ones that have parasites are imported animals that are wild collected. Parasite load can definitely affect appetite, especially if stress has allowed that parasite load to overwhelm the animal's overall immune, immune system and now the parasite load is becoming detrimental to the animal's health and it can certainly impact stress and stress suppresses appetite. So getting a fecal done on a wild collected animal is very important, especially if they're starting to go off food after a good while of being acclimated and you've done all the other stuff, the temps are good, they have lots of cover, they are adjusted to captivity, and yet they're still not eating, you might wanna look into having a vet do a fecal test to see if they have parasites. Last but not least is improper diet. Some animals just don't like certain types or brands of food. I have some animals that are quite picky and other animals that will eat anything. So they just might not be hungry or they might not like the particular brand, flavor, or type of food that you're feeding. I will say this though, a picky skink is not a hungry skink. A hungry skink will, at, 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 after pushed, will resort to eating things that they don't wanna eat for survivability. Most of the time, that is not a steadfast rule, but most of the time, a skink is going to eat eventually if they get hungry enough. That's not always the case, and of course we don't want to have to starve our animal to get them to eat what we want them to eat. We want to do what we can to try and get them to eat and enjoy and thrive in life, right? Yes, yes we do. I know he's giving me this glare like, what do you mean? <laughs> so we want to give them the best. So try a variety of different foods. Some high scenting 
flavor foods, sometimes high fatty foods. They're not ideal, but they can definitely stimulate feeding. And so give that a try. But the reality is it just might be the diet or particular thing you're trying to feed that they don't want, or they just aren't hungry. Well, guys, I hope that that helps you. And I really, I really hope that this gets out to folks who are new and panicking so that maybe they can troubleshoot a little bit. They might be able to just relax and give it some time, or they might be able to up the temperatures or fix the environment to give the animal a little bit better chance at acclimating quicker. They also might get a fecal and see if it's parasites. And last but not least, they might try a little bit of adapting of their different types of food to see if it's just some sort of flavor preference for the skink. I hope this helps you guys. Please, you know, check out other videos. If you're interested in Patreon, go check me out over on Patreon. Thank you to my patrons. You guys are awesome. And stay tuned. The Q&A is coming up this month. I am doing an extra video. This video is a little extra, specifically because I just watched over and over and over again people panicking about this very topic. So I thought I'd just throw a video out and hope it helps. So guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate you and I appreciate my patrons. And as always, remember, opinions are not fact.